All right, good evening. Welcome to another edition of the SoCalSportsReport.com podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm Vince Morales. I'm filling in at the captain's chair for our fearless leader, John Stellman, who is off today to spend time with family. So uh, tonight I'm joined by my good friend, John Adams, former pro golfer, Canadian and South American tour. Yeah, many. What are you, yeah, like yeah, eight, yeah, yeah. nine-time uh, San Clemente City champ? No, club champ. Oh, club. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. How many? Eight. Eight yeah. times. Yeah. Three, cl- three times city. Three times city? Yeah, wow. yeah. There you go. That just means you're old. Yeah, there you're we good. go. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We have a special guest tonight. Veteran sports writer, former LA Times reporter who covered the UCLA Bruins, Chris Foster. How you doing, Chris? I'm good. I don't play golf. It's it's an un, it's an un American sport. We're Americans, we don't believe in being below par. Just, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And we wouldn't be below par anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind being under par. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, John, what do you got going on, man? Well, uh, it's uh, good to be back. I was uh, away for a little bit, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be a fun night tonight, talking a lot of football. And uh, it's an honor to have uh, Chris in here, who is also a Triton. Uh, so we got three Tritons from San Clemente High School. That's uh, right. I was going to say that. Yeah, so yeah. class of eighty four, class 80, of eighty five, and seventy seven. Seventy seven. Yeah, and it's uh, it's always good to, to to talk with Chris and get uh, acquainted with him, and and always talk good to talk sports with him. He's uh, twenty eight years is twenty eight years with the Times. Twenty eight years with the L A Times yeah, until yeah. they paid me to go away. I mean, it's, <laughs> here's a buyout. You can take it if you want. And I yeah. said I'll take it. So uh, it's going to be fun tonight. So well, I'm looking forward to it. Welcome. So. Hopefully uh, you'll turn up here more than. Just this one time. <laughs> we'll invite you back. And well, heck, I'm thinking of sleeping here. To be honest. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty, it's, 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 yeah, yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. So while we're talking about San Clemente alumni, let's talk about uh, assistant coach for the Santa Margarita Little League World Series team, yep. uh, Rich Gray and his sons. The Gray el- Twins. Yep. The Gray Twins uh, eliminated from the Little League World Series, so they're out. But Yeah, it was a good run, and, and I know that um, it was a, a, a big win for them actually against Chula Vista down in San Diego. That was a, they actually talked about it a little bit on, on, the, on the cast um, in, uh, at the World Series about how that was a very, very big win against uh, Chula Vista to get to uh, San Bernardino to, to go on and, and get to the finals. And, you know, watching the whole Facebook pictures and stuff like that go on, it looked like it was uh, – it was a blast and something that uh, they'll never forget. And, um, you know, it's good to, to see how that's becoming a really big thing for these kids. And that's worldwide. And I thought it was great kudos by Major League Baseball to bring that Major League Baseball game there. Have happened to be that there was a couple guys from the Cardinals that played in the, major, right. in, the in the World right. Series. So and uh, what I heard via uh, all the. Um, uh, social media is a lot of these players were like, when when can our team go play there? Because it looked like it was a blast. So um, overall, you know, it was great for them. I think, you know, I think we talked about a little bit before about how they're stretching out this strike zone a little bit, and it was crazy. Yeah. How you know, balls right. were strikes, and and um, right, and a very disciplined team like right. Like and you got, you got a guy that Rich played collegiate baseball. You had the coach who played uh, for the championship. Uh, Fullerton team, right. Ankrum. So, you know, um, probably good discipline team, but it is what it is. And, you know, you got to be able to, you know, uh, just score a lot of runs in those kind of games. <laughs> and, uh, and, but a great, great for the, great for the town, great for the, uh, Southern California. And, and, uh, hopefully that, uh, all those kids, uh, had a blast doing it. So well, well speaking as a former little league um, umpire, which yes. I believe you were there, <laughs> and everything, I preferred the much tighter zone cause I couldn't hit as a little league kid. So I wanted to make sure every kid had a chance to walk. Right. So I wasn't well liked by some of the coaches in the league. Yeah. yeah. You were, you were like those games where the coaches are going, come on, speed it up here. You know? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I thought it was, it was, it's great. And I think that's becoming, I like how ESPN has grabbed it and, yeah. and, and made it a big worldwide, um, you know, production. So, yeah, it was yeah. terrific. I, you know, they usually get forty thousand or more people for the the finals mm-hmm. of the of that game, and and to have the the big leaguers over in the minor league park just down the road. I thought that was terrific. I mean, just a great spectacle, and the I mean, uniforms I, that were sort yeah, of had yeah, that little yeah. league feel to them yeah. it was really cool. And the other thing that was uh, is is crazy now is. Or if you look at it, I mean, you talk to the parents. I, I'd love to talk to, to Rich when he when uh, when we have a chance. But 
how long, how many games those kids have to play yeah. just to get to Williamsport is, and these parents taking off of work and, and now it's been, I mean, that's their summer vacation and, um, it's a, it's a long, long time. It's probably a good two, two months of tournament play and stress and yeah and dealing with all that so yeah but they are only 12 they're not you know oh my god they're not 50 which is why i wish that maybe there was a little less media hyperbole around it just you know these guys are still 12 years old well now the new thing i I saw where the young kid of dominican public was just crushed when it was a great thing to see the venezuela yes yes. go to the mound and console him right but still you're you're talking about a 12 year old kid who's put on that stage right and has something like that happen where they where he gives up the the hit that loses the game you know that i right. i was i've been haunted for life for far less things than that so yeah and and the one of the new things for next year is you cannot turn 13 during right. the year so that's right. going to be new so the kid's going to be have to be 12 all the way through the championship yeah and, and one thing i do like about what we what we saw is this whole sportsmanship thing is a really big key to um little league baseball and how and how all teams should act and you know we've all experienced that parent that's gone crazy in the stands and or or at the on the field coaching it's great to see those guys that they have to bite their lower lip and they can't say a word and they have to yeah yes or no they can't argue strikes and balls and stuff like that so on that side of it it's 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 uh fun to watch well when as you know when i coached youth sport basketball down in san clemente i was always keenly aware of what parents were the ones uh, i was going to have trouble with and i i always cut slack to their kids because i knew they were yeah, yeah. having to listen to yeah. it too and it's, it's just one of those things where i always thought that no parent should be allowed in to watch the game because <laughs> most of them are fine but let's not take a chance of that one getting in right, you know, we'll yeah. videotape it and show it at the pizza parlor yeah, later right. you know? <laughs> my dad was one of those parents <laughs> oh. so uh, and uh, so, Rich Gray, alumni, uh, I think 80? 80, 80 or 81, yeah. 80 right or 81, yeah. so very cool. And, and, and talking about San Clemente High School alum, you're wearing the hat for Nick Pasquale. The mm-hmm. Live Like Nick 4th yeah. annual uh, 5K run walk is going to be next Saturday. No, right? this, this Sunday. It's this, this, this Sunday. This, this Sunday. Sunday. Excuse yeah, me, eight, August 27th? Yeah, 8, okay. 8 a.m. in the morning, and it's uh, it's great. The, the, the foundation raises a lot of money for uh, local uh uh, I, I encourage everyone to show up yeah. and, and watch me finish last <laughs> and, and in the walking part. That's what's even right. saying. It's worth the price of admission just yeah. to see that. Yeah. It's Good like, eye, Chris. Yeah. Good eye. Yeah. Get yeah. my so, participant trophy and go home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, a very worthy cause yes. and uh, Nick Pasquale and then the whole Pasquale family, you know, mm-hmm. great family. Um, you were just talking about uh, UCLA, the the new locker rooms and, and yeah. So what did me- you find out? The Pasquale's actually went up to UCLA and saw the um, the new unveiling of their new sports complex I'm gonna guess for football their facility, uh, state yeah. state of the art I don't know if you know the number how much it cost but it's uh, 75 million I think yeah. was the final time. yeah and, and it's, you know how much they spent on a media room <laughs> zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> no but it's a beautiful place yeah it's a beautiful complex it's actually something that Mora kind of said to him hey look if you want me to stay here you're gonna have to support me with my uh, surroundings here and they did and uh, a nice check from under armor to convert into being their apparel uh, has helped in the 200 plus million dollar number but um well plus but, casey wasserman stepping up and right yeah and, and making the huge donation that's why it's called the wasserman center is so. it okay gotcha so um um they just told me that it's, it's state of the art and it's going to be really great for recruiting kids for the future so um and yeah, you, and yeah. you said they that they have a space for for Nick. So Nick, they gave Nick a locker room. So I'm not locker a locker in the in the locker room. So it's a great great very uh, cool good tribute great, nice yeah, honor. Yeah. But and, and it doesn't surprise me. I mean, knowing Jim Mora, yeah. who um, um, I had a actually a really good relationship with. Some people find that hard to believe, but I remember <laughs> when that whole tragedy went down. Him knowing I was from San Clemente, and he used to always tease me because I'd wear my San Clemente T-shirts out there. Mm-hmm. And after he went through that whole experience, he, it was like a couple of days after the, the funeral, and um, he came to me and says, you know, I, I get it about San Clemente now. He mm-hmm. said, I saw it. So, and, yeah. and he was outstanding for the Pasquale family through that. Yeah, and time. maybe you can expand on this. I know that uh, the, the Pasquale used to ask, uh, told me actually, um, he didn't he climb a mountain? Uh, he climbed like he, Cal- he, um, he went to Africa with others this year and climbed Kilimanjaro, yeah. and it was to raise money for, for well. clean water yeah 
And he raised enough money that they were able to sink a well in this village in the name of Nick Pasquale. Yeah. Wow. And he said the the number of man hours that saved just in not having to haul water in alone mm-hmm. was making their lives better. And so, yeah, yeah he's he's always remembered Nick. He's yeah. always going to remember Nick. Yeah. And, and it's important to him. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that's great. So, um I wrote down Saturday, August 27th, but are it's, you, it's going to be Sunday. 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 Okay. Sunday. Right. So Sunday. Sunday. I'm Sunday. actually going to start on Saturday Sunday. So, I can, <laughs> so I can finish. Sunday is okay. August 27th, just okay. to let you know. Okay. So Sunday, August 27th. Yeah. At 8 You're going to be there on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody wants race, to, yeah. to start with Chris <laughs> yeah. and needs a little head start. Chris starts in, in the parking lot at Saturday evening, and right. by Sunday at 8 a.m. 8 he's at the... Uh, I might be at the field by then, yes. <laughs> it's going to be uh, Chris and a pregnant lady, and he right. might finish behind yeah. her baby. Yeah. So, <laughs> All right. So uh, talking about uh, Southland football, uh, we're going to get into that. The, the, the Chargers, the Rams... USC and UCLA, and I think we might as well segue to a little college uh, football. Okay. Um, why don't we do that and start? Why don't we start with UCLA again? You, you know, I think the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about was the Josh Rose, Rosen comments about Alabama and how you know uh, Mora handled that, and just kind of get your take on on what you well, think it was happening there. Because I had just said to John not the week before, I said, "Wow." Rosen has been on his best behavior. He's really keeping a low profile, keeping his mouth shut, and and getting down to business. And then all of a sudden, bam! And then he comes out with the, the well. I, I think after th- two plus years, I think Jim Moore is pretty capable of dealing with any <laughs> Josh Rosen situation at the time. Right. Hot tubs or Josh no. is he? He's a guy that likes the attention. He used to tell me he liked the attention. He found it fun where at stadiums where people were chanting against him. He's just that's how he's wired. Right. I think what makes probably makes Jim a little happier is that um, at least he's sticking to stuff like issues in college football and right. college football instead of wearing Trump ball caps and, mm, yeah, right, and yeah, right. hot tubs. And, right. and, yeah, so, I mean, there seems to be some progress there. But it's Josh is his own guy, and that causes, I think, some consternation once in a while around UCLA. Right. It, it, it more seems like a, a classy guy, like you say, who can handle, you know, Rosen. Uh, but what do you think NFL teams think about that sort of uh, thing? Well, and uh, I only know this just talking to NFL writers here and there that I know. And there are um, some questions about Josh as far as his makeup. They all think he has a big time arm, big time. has a big time talent. But, you know, that's not the only thing that NFL teams judge a right. player by. And so uh, I, I believe UCLA people have tried to nudge him along in that way. And, and again, he's a kid still. You, you can understand some of this, but I think Certain. they're trying to make it clear to him that, you know, NFL teams are, are not just looking for guys that can throw the ball 60 yards. They're looking for guys that they can count on, to, especially at that position, to run their offense and right. to, to be, be a their leader. guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and not to imply that he's a Johnny Manziel type of guy, but that's, you know. But you, interesting enough, that was one of his heroes when he got to UCLA. Yeah, really? So, interesting. Yes. Yeah, and that's not somebody you want to model your, your career after. Well, not if you're going into football. I mean, <laughs> if you're if you're going going into you know like reality TV, maybe. Right. But right. Yeah, yeah, if you're going into the NFL, right. I think you want to or marketing work. stripper poles or something like that. <laughs> oh, we can go that far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On that, that because I had a much better line. That's light blue. That's light blue. Okay. <laughs> we can't go dark blue. No. It, it, these are like like John said, be a leader. It's not just be a leader. You're the quarterback. You're the right. focal point. You want to be the right focal point, and I think they brought him along. And, and from what I remember him as a freshman to what I just talked to him for a story I wrote for UCLA about mm-hmm. a month ago, and he seemed to have come miles. Yeah, and and now you got a new offensive coordinator now, and and he's come from the pros, and then he you know he's gone pro college, pro college type of deal, and and you just hope that you know it's another year under, with Josh, and it's another year hopefully maturity where this guy can guide him in the right direction. I know this guy's. I don't know, am I right, Chris, but you say he's more of a run first, pass second kind of guy, but he loves to have the option that, you know, Josh can't well, chuck if, the ball if, if, you know. If um, UCLA's backs and offensive line, I mean, right. the, the run first is going to be real quick, and then you're going to be throwing the ball a lot. Right, exactly, That's the area exactly. But um, 
you know, one thing I sent out to a couple uh, UCLA guys that I know, and I sent out an, a, a text message to him saying, you know, can't Rosen just keep his nose down and work about, you know, worry about football and just and and su- uh, su- success and run in his offense and not shoot his mouth off about Alabama and all this kind of stuff. And and some of them came back and said, you know, I really don't have a problem with what he said. Um, but I said, I I don't either. But as a leader of a team, can you stay out of stay out of the controversy and 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 this is nationwide this is just not local stuff right. they say and and just be a leader you know and and i think to be a successful leader you know you don't see a guy like sam darnold going out and shooting his mouth off you know and and i just think it's something that hopefully maturity comes into into play here and 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 um hopefully maybe this new offensive coordinator can just kind of say let's just worry about football here and run an offense yeah so. for, for for me looking at it I, I didn't mind the Alabama comments. It's one of those things where every school that has a higher academic standard like Stanford and UCLA and Notre Dame typically will say things like, well, you know, we can't do the same things that an Alabama can or that these SEC schools mm-hmm. can. And, and we can't make the same exceptions and get the same type of talent. Um, you know, what, if, we, if we did, what kind of team could we fill on, the, on you know, every season? But the, the other part was the, you know, the you can't play football and you can't blend football and academics. Yeah. And that's clearly not the case. There are right. plenty of people who went to college and had right. two jobs and you were probably writing and maybe you had work study or whatever when you were in college. You know, we, we, we all did that sort of thing. Well, and beyond that, this is an area that's very sensitive around UCLA. You mentioned Stanford and UCLA together. To, you know, to me, Stanford and UCLA, there's a, there's, there's a gap there. Right. But UCLA people don't see it. And they see uh, one of their student athletes saying this, well, he better not go 4-8 and eight again. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. You know, you're talking about your friends. I'm not saying these are your friends, but right, yeah. Rosen's still the golden little child to them. But another tough season, and they're not going to be happy. That's just the way a segment of fan bases are. So saying that, had to concern people at UCLA higher up about the academic part, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it was explained to him in great detail about this is not how UCLA portrays things. Right, mm-hmm. right. So it's 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 going to be interesting then uh, because it, it's sort of if you if you read the subtext of it, it's well maybe it doesn't work for for Josh Rosen. Um, school and uh, and football which would tend to make you think well you make the, the leap he's not coming back next year what, what how do you feel about whether he his he's going to come back for another year or whether he's going to move on now? well and interesting enough it's all going to depend on five guys up front right i agree he has a good year he is gone yep. he another struggle year god forbid there's an injury or something like mm-hmm. that he, he's going to have to come back because he's it, the nfl is just not going to know about him yet and it's all going to depend on those five guys up front. Right. And Colton Miller better be – he better figure Colton Miller is his best friend there at left tackle and yeah. take him to lunch or whatever else he's doing when he's not going to these tough classes. Because those guys <laughs> were not strong last year. Right. And it showed they couldn't run the ball, and Rosen became a pinata. Right. And, yeah. and I, think, I think regardless, he could go, you know, he could go four and eight again and, but finish out the season. And I still think he's gone. Depends think, on what kind of season he had. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's one of the other things is, you know, I started looking at it and, you know, uh, he had, um, you know, when he was healthy, his four, you know, how many games did he actually play? He played, uh, was it four? I think he was played four games. And, you know, Texas A&M, he throws for 343, throws for 307 against BYU, throws for 350 against Arizona, and he throws for over 400 against ASU. So, I mean, if if he's healthy and he, and and like you said that line can actually save him i think they can be very competitive but how many of those games did they win true no exactly absolutely agree you know and that's where obviously you, know, you got to look I, at the I, defense i saw and, richard brio set a ucla record against arizona state and they were out of the game in the second quarter mm, and you know, yeah. you know you're throwing the ball a lot you're going to roll it in when you don't have a running game you have to throw the ball so i think mean, you have to look beyond the numbers there is he winning how you know what sort of right pass completion percentage does he have is he hitting receivers and the point. other thing that's got to help him is is 
they got a UCLA's receivers has got to stop treating the football like it's wearing cardinal and gold. Right. I mean, they just drop things left and right. They didn't want to touch it. Right. Yeah. And that's going to be another issue. So. Yeah. Where UCLA stands now, defensively, they are incredibly strong, and and I think the world of Tom Bradley, the defensive coordinator. Yeah. I think he's maybe the best in the business in college football. Right. Uh, so they got the elements on that side of the ball, but you know there's so many questions on the other side of the ball. You don't know if they're four and eight or. But, but you do have a majority of that line coming back, correct, on the offensive line. You right? do, but you and know. And I, I know that the linebacker core is a little young around young, but I mean, um, but you know, other than that, I think that the defensive, I mean, that the secondary is pretty pretty strong. Oh right? no, the, yeah, the, you know, you yeah. Got and you, if you can get some pass rushers, if you can get some Jaleel pass Wadu. rushers going, you know, that's that's the well, big they key got there this, too. Well, they got this Phillips is yeah. a guy that's really opening some eyes, and you have you have some Jacob Teodi Mariner back, and right, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So defense isn't the problem, but you know where where's the, you know where are the improvements going to be on offense? How are these running backs that are that are coming back here? I, I you know what I the guy that's starting to show something Bola and boy this is a tough one. Oh, on me. Yeah, I Ola, wrote it down. Yeah, Ola of Fun Me, yeah. Fun Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was the guy when he came in that I liked the most of that group. I mean, I know So So Jamambo was right, a big Right, yeah, yeah. Guy, but I, I always thought he ran too straight up. I thought he was, you know, he was an easy, he had a big target. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate Starks has had yes, moments, yep. but I thought Bolo was the guy. And from, you know, I'm not out there every day anymore. Right, but yeah. everything I hear, he's starting to look like the guy. So yeah. that takes the pressure off too. But again, you know, it's are, there's going to be holes to run it. But just kind of like USC in the past, if you can get three guys that can run the football, I mean, successfully, and you got a line, I mean, that's, you know. That's going to be very good for Rosen to open up and throw the bit, throw the well, ball. Well, yeah, so. you, you you put that that right. question. I mean, you know, that's the advantage SC has. I mean, you know, Sam Darnold's a terrific player, and I think right. he'd be drafted far ahead of Rosen at this point. Right. Yeah. But he's got a running back back there too. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you got to you got to honor that. A couple yeah. of them. You got to yeah. honor that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, for me, looking at it, you know, Rosen when he was healthy. Just wasn't as sharp, uh, you know. Ten touchdowns, five interceptions in the games that he did play. You know, he had like a 138 passer rating, but like you said, how many of those did they win? Yeah. Well, and there were a lot of drops. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, it just they seem very so much out of sync last year in the early in the season when he's still there. Right. And now, you know, now you got your third offensive coordinator in four years, yeah. and that's, you know, that's a lot of change. Yeah. yeah, and 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 that is a tall order. They open sun. They open September third. Is that a Sunday game? I'm. Looking it's, at they it moved it, it to Sunday. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Sunday, September third game against Texas A and M. Against our old offense coordinator. Uh, well, Noel back yeah, back in, yeah, back yeah, in Noel, the Rose Bowl. Noel, yeah. Noel's back there. Yeah, and he's been out. This is his third year now. There, I think there. Yeah, second year. Third, second, year second year. I think. Yeah, second year. Yeah. yeah. So he was Rosen's first offensive coordinator. Right. It's going to be quite a test. I think they they'd rather have seen Hawaii first. <laughs> well, you know what? You look at those four games, and there's a lot of concern there. Oh, I, Memphis. That, that Memphis game. And Memphis, But even Hawaii. Hawaii is the, not a bad team. Talk about throwing it. Yeah, they're they not a bad team. It. Yeah. And this is classic UCLA moment. That yeah, I saw week. this for nine years that I covered them. That game where they just go to themselves, we got this one. Yeah. And yeah. it turns out they don't. They either almost get beat or they do get beat. That game... So then you go from that to down to Memphis, which is not going to be easy. That's a good, pretty and, good team. And, and then Stanford, which UCLA has not beaten since 2008. Right. You, you could be, I mean, they might be lucky to be two and two. They should be ecstatic to be three and one. Mm -hmm. But you could look at that and say, well, if they're not careful, they could be one and three. Mm -hmm. Right. And then here we go. So. Right. And then the naysayers start to come out. And, and people start asking, is Jim Moore going to be gone? Although I right. don't think. It would take a lot for him to leave, yeah. but be um, taken out. But, it, it, you know, it's just, yeah, it, just, it doesn't take much to start that. Yeah, that was the other question that I had was about Jim Mora's, um, you know, stability and, and security with the position. It, it doesn't seem like it. I mean, he's been, he's had a, three great years, and then, but it's been a steady regression since then, 10, 8, 4, uh, and the win totals. Is he is he safe, or is that just some of those fair weathered UCLA fans well, who are saying well, again four and eight? We might have to to watch it. My hunches and my hunches are often wrong. Anybody that's <laughs> into the track with me will will note all the tail horses that I bet on that limp. But yeah. my hunch is is that I don't think Dan Guerrero wants to go through another coach search 
the athletic director right. there, if he can at all avoid it. He is believed to be retiring in 2019, so it would be just easier to have Jim take him on into the retirement. But really, that's in Jim and his team's hands. I mean, if it goes badly, and I right. don't know, it may not go badly. It may go right. really well for them. But if it goes badly, you're going to hear a lot of carpet right. from Bruin fans. They're so, right. and, yeah. and he's doing, he's doing, you know, when he, you know, Mora's brought in four new coaches, right? Obviously, an offensive coordinator, and so he's he's showing them that he's wanting to make changes and make right. things better. <clears throat> so, it's not like he's just doing his time and, you know, waiting for maybe a pro job somehow to open up to what he might want to jump to. But well, I, I don't know, know a pro team that would look at it. No, at the I, moment. I don't yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah. Two years ago, three years ago, yeah, but yeah, there was the fear. I yeah. know if you were right. a Bruin fan. At the end of those the two seasons ago, after he, back to back ten seasons, he parlayed some cursory contract and mm-hmm. contact into some nice contract yeah. extensions. Yeah. Like, know, God him. bless him. Good sure. for him. Yeah, absolutely. I wish I got, in fact, what am I getting for this again? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> An attaboy. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your service. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> I'll buy you a hot dog at the Triton game. There you go. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I mean, you know, I think Jim is probably going to be there a year from now. But again, a, a lot of it. Depends on Rosen, and a lot of that depends on who's going to block for it. It's really just the whole dominoes. And, and I look at, and, and 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 I look at this whole this this offense, and it reminds me a little bit of the, what the Chargers have is like behind Rosen is mediocre at best, and behind right. Rivers is horrendous. To be honest with you, so you You're know, not a it, Cardale fan, or yeah. <laughs> Whoever, I mean, you could just roll the dice and throw somebody in there. Well, let, let's put it, let's put it this way: I'm a contract worker for the Chargers, writing stories for mm-hmm. them. I'm also fourth on the depth chart for quarterback. So, <laughs> boy, that is yeah. tough. And it's going to yeah. take him a day to get from the parking lot to, to the yet, so. stadium. Yeah. 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 so he's a pocket passer, is yeah. what he's trying to say. <laughs> They're not running the option. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, actually, if I'm in, they're running out of options. <laughs> So what do you think the threshold, if you're playing the devil's advocate, what's the threshold for Mora to keep his job? You obviously think even if he, he has a mediocre season. It would have to take a disastrous season, I think, or something happen. Right. You know, and, and Jim's been a pretty straight up guy that things don't seem to happen in his program. Right. And, and, and the few times they have, he's reacted and in a very proactive and harsh way that I can't go into details with right. when mm-hmm. guys have not mm-hmm. done what they're supposed to do or right. done things that embarrass the program. So I don't foresee right. anything like that happening. You know, they'd have to look at the circumstances if it was six and six or even four and eight. Mm-hmm. You know, they'd have to see him what he was coming back and, you know, that it, it would take a lot, I think, for him to lose his job this right. year. Yeah. I think the, the fair-weathered Bruin fans – uh, might be looking at it and saying, wait a minute, he's had his, his was it five years, four years? Mm-hmm. These are his players now. These are all of his recruits. These are all of his players. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the progression has been down. Now that is a stretch because Ro- you know Rosen injured. That took this absolute steam out of right, that team. Right. Yeah, right. So, so that's a, that's a, we'll throw that one out, right? But eight and five in 2015, not where they, where they were looking to be. Well, who was his big stars early on? Well, a young were, young Rosen, right? No, but even before that. Oh, when, when he got there, he had guys. Rick Neuheisel could recruit. Right. I don't think he did as much with guys once he got them, but you had Brett Hundley, you had Jonathan Franklin, you had Anthony Barr, Cassius Marsh, Eric Kendricks. You know, he Jim walked into a, a place that, was needing a guy like him to take that talent. And you make also it had the kid that played both ways, um, the superstar inside linebacker. Miles Jack. That Miles was one of Jack. his recruits, yeah, yeah. though. That was, oh, one yeah, of that was one of his. These, oh, all these gotcha. guys were new oh, Heisel gotcha. guys. Gotcha. Jake okay. Brendel yeah. another new Heisel guy. I mean, they missed him dearly yeah. last year. I, th- I think objectively, yeah. you've got to give him another season. Oh, yeah. Uh, you absolutely have to give him another season. But it's it's these are his guys now. He, well, he needs and, to show it. The, and, he, and you're right about UCLA fans. There there's oh. there's a segment of them out there that would have been for Dewey until about midnight in 1948, <laughs> and then they would have just landed on Dewey. So yeah, it, it it depends on on whether or not you're you're a Jim Moore fan, and I and I think you, UCLA fans don't know how good that you know you don't know what you you've got until it's yeah. gone, right? right? And yeah. and if you have to go through a whole other coaching search are you going to find a guy who it fits as well who potentially could be as as, as good as more can be and well plus jim does the other things so well right maybe not 
deal with the media always. But like <laughs> I said, Jim and I got along great. But he does the other things so well. I mean, he, he speaks well when he comes out to talk about the school in general. You know, they use him a lot for that. He's very in tune to academics. He doesn't put up with a lot of shenanigans from players. I mean, he, he does so many other things that UCLA craves in a coach that, you know, that will all count for him. And said, I don't see him going anywhere after this year. I mean, he's, he's – can be crazy at times. In fact, I've told him that, that, mm-hmm. that when I left, I told him that 95% of the time he probably had more as much character as any coach I covered, and he asked me about the other 5%. <laughs> and I said, well, you're back crap crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, only five? <laughs> so, so, I mean, but when, you know, he, he's such a good salesman for the school. Again, that's going to end. Guerrero likes that. And believe me, Dan and I have been through coach searches together. He does not want to do another coach search. That's a terribly difficult thing. And and for a lot of reasons, it's more difficult at UCLA because their fan base has a vision of this program that's not as accurate about the past as – the, you know, the reality is a little different than what they view it as. And Les Miles isn't coming this way. No, no, <laughs> nor, yeah, nor, nor is no. Bob Stoops. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. No, it, it, it's tough. Uh, again, and that has always been, you know, as a, as a USC fan, as a USC alum, always looking across and saying, you know, I understand your basketball team and a lot of your other programs, but UCLA football really doesn't have quite the, the prestige and the legacy uh, program caliber that you think it does uh, you want it to and you think that maybe you should you expect that it should be there but it hasn't quite been there well they haven't had the year in and year out consistency of right. a, a program that you would consider elite programs alabama right. nebraska right. Yeah. usc ohio state you know that, that that year in and year out where it's a surprise when they go eight and four right right you know and ucla had they've had some great years and they have they've strung them together a few times or thing. The thing that I always found funny, I think, I think OJ's first crime in UCLA is he killed the UCLA football program (laughs) because he doesn't go on that run. UCLA could end up as national champs. And now that's a whole, you know, who knows what it goes from there. Right. So it's, I think that was the watershed moment where USC really lifted themselves Mm. above it. So let's, let's go down the schedule, UCLA, UCLA's schedule. We talked about uh, Sunday, September 3rd, uh, home against Texas A&M, then they host Hawaii, then they have to go on the road to Memphis and Stanford on, on back-to-back weekends. That's short, like you were saying, maybe that Hawaii is a trap game for right. them. That's a short week as well. Um. <laughs> well, then this is the other thing about UCLA. When does school start? Right. Yeah, end of September, right? They're notorious for just having a dog effort the first game back. When everybody's in class, because for that first month, they got a tremendous advantage. They're basically an NFL team. They aren't, their kids aren't in school. Right. Right. They're just practicing football. It's all football. Right. And then that first week, they usually have a little, little kerfuffle, whether they lose the game or not, but it's usually trouble. So who's that first September, October game? So they so the first four we talked about. Then it's September thirtieth against Colorado at right. home, and then they get a buy that first weekend well, that, October. That may not be a coincidence. Uh, that that may I would I would wonder if that was something that they planned. So huh. then so they've got the October seventh buy, and then they're at Arizona. It's a dreadful team. Yeah. Dreadful place to go play. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Sorry, Tucson. You guys are terrible. <laughs> home against Oregon. And that then... Haven't beaten Oregon since 2007. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then on the road to Washington. And that's going to be oh. a tough UW team. Yeah. Um, that's going to be two tough weeks. And then they go to Utah. Utah not as strong this year. And they usually struggle up at Utah. Yeah. And when, what's the date weekend? on that? That's a November 3rd. It could be cold. And it's a Friday game. Oh, so, again, okay. another short week for them after that Washington, after the UW on the road. Right. Um, then they go back to well, Utah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that's, that's always when they play up there. If you look at the history, they've, it's, I, don't, I don't know if they've won by more than a touchdown any time they've gone up in Utah since yeah. I've been going. Yeah. I know that in 2007, the great dream of, of Carl Durrell's last year ended in Utah. Yeah when Marcus Everett reached for the end zone and somebody knocked the ball out of his hands. And yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's not an easy place for them to play. Then home against Arizona state. And then they have USC they're going to be at the Coliseum against USC on the road games. And then back home against California. Okay. 
you know, don't sleep on California. Yeah. They might, I don't know, they're going to keep football or yeah, <laughs> they no. might you get rid of football before the end of the season. I, I think they are, but I think Ann Coulter is going to coach it as kind of a peace <laughs> offering for her um, free speech thing and, and her getting her talk canceled. So I think she's now the coach of the Bears. So what you have to do is load up on the right if you're on the defensive coordinator. <laughs> so. Uh, so what, looking at that schedule, Chris, have you given some thought to what you think that the record will be there? Well, you know, like I said, it's with UCLA, you, you, you never know because they lose games they're not supposed should never lose, and they win right. games they should never win. I mean, if you, you go by history, you take it right off the top, they're going to get beat by Stanford. Stanford's really good. That's you know everybody's talking about Washington and SC, but yeah, you know, so so we'll give them the opener with A and M, and we'll give them the Hawaii, Hawaii, and Memphis. That one I would toss up. Okay. And then Colorado's not bad either, but I, I would think they would might win that one. So what are you yeah, looking at? It's a home so, game right so there. So, so, so you're, they you're mess three, up either the Hawaii. three and two or four and one. Yeah, right? if they mess up the Hawaii or they, they could be three. So they're four and one. They're right. probably if, in good shape. If they can be four and one going into that bye before taking on a horrible Arizona team right. and then the big two weeks Oregon, I think you I think the Bruin fans would take that. Yeah, and I, I think this, just again, my hunch – and um, boy, I you know I I had um, the Nets to win the NBA title last year. <laughs> in my, in my pool. Um, I would think this is the year they get Oregon. Okay. Oh, I think really? Oregon's right. I don't you know Oregon's a oh, new coach there too. New yeah. coach there. And, you know again this injuries you don't know mm. injuries you don't right, know how yeah, guys yeah. are going to develop. So I'll take that. And then they're going to get beat by Washington. Yeah. That then, seems like yeah. And then I don't know about Utah. That's a question. Yeah. Okay. And then Arizona State I think's a win. And then I think they lose to SC. And then beat I got to go with the San Clemente guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the say beat Cal. So what do we got there? That could be, depending on what they do against Utah, that could, that could make uh, either a nine or an eight win season. Mm-hmm. I, I think. Um, I think that if you. If you that's can a be, good season for UCLA. I if you can so beat, if you yeah, can beat Utah and go and, and win nine games, right. I, I think that's a, that's a strong year. Right. But, you know, like you said, yeah, you know, could they dump the Cal game? Yeah, it's. it's you know, how, how bad, you know, they get beat by SC, they can yeah. come back right, from that. Yeah, I'm yeah, with yeah. you on that Memphis game. Right. I, I think they, they, they coast well, against Hawaii, Hawaii, but I think I that Memphis see, game. I think Hawaii is good, and I think if, if UCLA wins the first game, I think Hawaii will give them trouble. Hmm. I don't I, know if they'll win, but they'll give them yeah. trouble. I haven't seen a new um, Vegas uh, over-under on, on regular season wins for the Bruins, but when it opened, uh, Vegas had them at seven and a half. Yeah. Right. So right around where that eight, if they lose to Utah, that eight win season, yeah. one, if they and lose you know, to Utah. let's see A and M, they got a new quarterback. We'll yeah, see what they good. got yeah. for them too. So, I mean, those are, those are kind of the new QB in Utah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Another. these are kind of the, uh, the 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 games that are are the linchpin to to make it a mediocre or good season. Right. I think a lot of it has to do with health too. I mean, if they're healthy the whole way through, I think they can go eight nine nine wins. But like you said, if they lose some key key people. Uh, it could get to, you know, one of those they, 500 kind of games. They should place Colton Miller in a plastic bubble when he's not in class or, or practicing. They, just, <laughs> they don't want any mysterious accidental things right, to happen. Yeah, right. Colton, Colton is Josh Rosen's new best friend. Right, so. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, according to Vegas, uh, UCLA, Texas A&M, the opening line on that was UCLA minus three and a half. Mm. So oh, that's right. It's at home. That's right. Yeah, they're at home. They're at home, which, uh, you know, that's – Again, according to Vegas, like uh, like a an even game on a neutral. Right. Yeah. True. Well, on knowing Noel Mazzoni, he's been working on this game plan for yeah, a while. Yeah. Yeah. He exactly. Went, he he got beat up by UCLA fans pretty good his last couple of years yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and not all his fault. Not yeah. all his fault. Yeah. So I we'll see if he's had that date marked on the calendar, uh, and they get off and UCLA gets off to a loss there. It, well, like I said, those first four games, you're gonna you're gonna know a lot about UCLA's right. football team. Yeah, right. I agree. Right. I agree. And and how they react to any setbacks right. early is gonna test the metal of that uh, that team, that coach, and their quarterback. So let's we're moving on from UCLA. Um, let's yeah, say they the have freeway, an eight or down, nine down the freeway. Just a, yeah, <laughs> it's a that hour and a half drive uh, from West LA <laughs> to downtown. Hour and a half. You got to be kidding me. That's, that's a good day. That's with ways. Yeah, you're running that's a good. carpool lane. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Trojans, who um, 
the depository for all San Clemente quarterbacks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've got uh, Darnold and Sears now, but it looks like uh, they might try to redshirt Sears. I'm sure they will, yeah. Um, and hopefully if everybody stays healthy, that, that it, will be the it, case. It uh, sounds like they yeah. want to uh, send Jack in the same down the same avenue as they did Sam and just uh, have him go against the uh, – um, be the, uh, right. what do they call it? The scout team. Right. It's exactly what Sam did. And, and, and that's great. I mean, you just, you're going against, you're going against a great defense every single week and, and, you know, learning how to, uh, you know, play against the best, you know, a strong defense every single week. And that's only going to make you a better player. So, um, uh, no question. And, and Jack, uh, graduated early and yep. showed up for spring yep. football. So again, he's ahead of the game there. Well, I mean, and he like showed Dar- me at San Clemente. He's, yeah. he's a learner too. Yeah, you could see the progression all along. So, but. yeah, and, he, and he's getting bigger. Yeah, he's getting bigger, and um, uh, you know, obviously, um, they they prize him and they want to keep him healthy, but uh, still, right now, want to redshirt him, keep him down on on the the depth chart. Uh, Matt Fink will be the backup for SC, yeah. and but um, you know, Darnold is in that position where now we get to see now that he's had time to think about it. Is he going to be the same type of player, you know, the same mentality when he steps on the field? As a USC fan, that's the thing you worry about is you go, he didn't have time to think. He was just playing and, uh, and, and making good decisions. Uh, but you, what happens? Yeah, I think the big thing about Sam's uh, situation is how is he going to handle the hype, right? You know, so, and how is USC football going to handle the hype? Because, you know, they went from – you know, dreadful first start of the first three games to making a run for what and you get eight and zero or something like that. To, you could have made a, an argument for him in the playoffs. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, how does he? You know, on the front of ESPN the magazine, he's doing ESPN Sports Science. He's on the cover of a lot of stuff. How you know he still kept that whole mellow, you know, laid back, kicked back lifestyle, and he's coming home to kind of get away from everything, and that's all great. Um, but I mean, even even the whole Clay Helton situation is like, you know, he kind of inherited this job and he went and made this change with Sam and they made a run. And how is he going to handle the hype and how is he going to coach these kids? And, you know, they lost some some pretty big stars with, you know, Dory, Dory going yeah, Dory. and Juju going yeah. and, you know. But more so, importantly, they're three of their, their top linemen. They're right in the front right, line. Exactly, exactly. So, and they're still sort of shuffling things around right there. So yeah. the to me, that's the big thing. The difference there with Sam, first of all, to answer your question, Sam Darnold's not going to worry about this whatsoever. Those it's not going to bother him. Sam is, Sam is like the the Frankenstein monster. Only they put the proper brain in his head when they installed it. It wasn't so he ended up yeah. being this huge specimen with a brilliant mind and all that yeah. instead of the other monster. That right. They, you know he's a very but, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was just saying he is going to. I mean, he doesn't care one bit. And yeah, I think you saw a glimpse of that in the Rose Bowl where Absolutely. he threw that touchdown pass and yeah. just nothing. Right. And looked at the sidelines, one or two. Right. And so that now how SC handles things as being a, getting the hype is going to be different. But you're right about the offensive line. The difference between what Rosen faces in a similar situation right. and what Darnold faces is Darnold's a creator on the move. Right. I don't think Rosen can do that, but Darnold is a guy that, that – He's even more dangerous when oh it yeah, absolutely down. when things break down it was unbelievable and it was something that the Trojans haven't had in a long long time is somebody with you know I love this word the escapability you know the guy who can extend the play and look downfield and he just seemed so polished and so poised when he would when the pocket would break down he'd have to to move out of it and just keeping his eyes downfield and making strong throws it was unbelievable it was really refreshing after you know the Trojans had started one and three to watch him and say we're in good hands yeah and he got better as the games went on you know and that's the other thing is you know he's playing regular season games where he he he's he shined at a really big game in the Rose Bowl and he was able to handle all that all that press and all that hype and all that stuff so like you said Chris he's very mild manner you know, like you, if you told him that he won the lottery for 350 million dollars you would say Great, where, where can I go pick yeah, that I'm, up? I'm going to go know? go to Pedro's Tacos. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, is he, yeah. Are they a sponsor? I, I, yeah, I, no. <laughs> but I mean, they can know, be. But, <laughs> but you're absolutely right. Le- losing Banner, le- losing Wheeler is. Yeah. is, is and three, Damien Mama. Yeah. Right, well, three and, massive and guys Justin on the line. Davis. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I like Justin Davis a lot. 
as a running back. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it took some of the load away from others, and, it, and he was he was just a, a dangerous guy. Yeah, but they're, 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 the recruiting classes are, are really strong, and it's just you know getting these guys. And 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 I heard that you know the fall practices were here and there weren't the best, and it was good at times, it was bad at times. But getting these new guys on in sync with Sam is is going to be the the key to this whole thing. And and then again with the Trojans, I think, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, they, they kind of miss out on, you know, a Dory Jackson scored a lot of points for them, yeah. you know, in punt returns and kickoff returns and those kind of things. Will these other guys or two or three guys that are going to be able to fill that role, will they be able to fill that role? I I think the depth is there for the Trojans, you know, but going back to their their start, they've got two they got two key games in the first five games right. they have to worry about. One being Stanford, which is at home. That helps, right? Um, I think Washington State was not – it's not easy to, to win up there. And yeah, you, you, you just take it for course. granted, and he yeah. slings it like no other up there. And, you know, you could get a rainy day. It could be a sloppy game. You just – you know, um, that's a that's a that's... game for me that's on the on kind of the, the list to, to keep an eye out for because – you know, they can upset you up there. They play well up there. That's that's, that's a, a good that's quarterback a up there. Yeah, that's a difficult place to go to. It's uh, Pullman. Yeah, yeah. You, first of all, you got to drive twenty five through Colfax right. on the way down to <laughs> Pullman because they half the city budgets on speeding tickets right there. And so you <laughs> learn that fast when you're on there. It's one of those where you're going downhill and it says sixty, sixty, twenty five. Yes. Right. <laughs> but yeah, you so you have to you you have to go to Spokane and then you got a bus an hour and a half down the road to get right. to Pullman. It's it's a grueling trip. It's like the dark side of the moon. And but now it, you got a team up a coach yeah. up there that is pretty good. And, 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 and a it, Friday night game. It's and, it's a, it's a, it's a short yeah, week. Yeah, it's a short, yeah, week. short week. Yeah. And then and then you go, you know, a couple of other weeks to Notre Dame. Now Notre Dame always plays the most brutal rec uh, brutal uh you know, schedule in the world. So by the time you get to them, I think they'll be beat up anyway. So I don't think that's gonna be really a problem. Uh, you but. know what, I may live to regret this, but I I, I don't fear that Notre Dame no. game on the no, road. Notre Dame's... That Washington State game I'm I'm more scared about. Yeah. But again, I'm I'm not too too worried about that. It's the that that early game against the Cardinal mm-hmm. at home. Um we'll see. It has Stanford and they're, and they're down a little bit. We, we we're, yeah. we're going to see whether or not I'm I'm just grateful to not have, have to McCaff- watch McCaffrey, <laughs> McCaffrey run yeah. all over the pack up. Stanford's yeah. awfully good, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah, he gets, you know, he can control the ball. He controls the line of scrimmage up there and he's all about just bringing in all the 300 pounders it's, and just yeah. eating up clock, you know, and that's, you know, it's like having a turnover. Little... I think turnovers are going to be the big thing of that game. You know, um, McCaffrey was the difference last year. Mm-hmm. He's gone. Um, that game's at home, but, but, but John's right. He can just, it's like having that little brother's, Try, try to take the ball away from them. Mm-hmm. Even yeah, when yeah, too. yeah. You just keep, you know, they just keep the ball and keep the ball, and and that's how they're always able to beat Oregon in the yeah. past. So you know, that's you know, but that's yeah, that's a that's a great early game. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna that's uh, Saturday, September 9th. So that's coming up quick. Uh, just a couple of things that I wanted to note: uh, the uh, Darnold is a preseason All American. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cameron Smith and uh, Iman Marshall also made the preseason All America list. So uh, defensively. Uh, Clancy Pendergast has yes. a terrific team. Um, even though they were very good last year, there were there were games clearly, and you know they fell apart on Penn State for a, a big portion of that that Rose Bowl. And but Clancy Pendergast's defenses tend to get a little better as he's yeah. there. You know he any any guy who can make Cal, <laughs> you know, def- right. a Cal defense that ferocious. I uh, you, you know I'm waiting to see. What more? Because I liked Clancy when he was here, you know, before, and I'm glad he's, you know, back. Well, he loves to bring it. You know, he yeah. brings everybody at you. Um, you know, they had a big, you know, they got their butt kicked against Alabama, and then they let Penn State score a bunch of uh, points there. But other in the middle, you know, he kind of kept it to, what, 25, 27 points per game. Well, and, you know, you how, know, how many points did Penn State get in the fourth quarter? True. You know, no, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's true, yeah. That's right. You can't win it in the first, second, or third. Right. Yeah. You so, know, you got to win it no, in the fourth. The thing about SC is they always have the talent. And this is why it's going to be an interesting year for me to watch Helton. Because the key has always been, do they have that coach that can congeal the team, can right. make that team move in the right direction together? And they didn't have that last year until they made the change at quarterback. That's right. That's and, right. And, 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 and again, 
any okay i'm going to i'm going to just going to go out in there and i'm going to say this max brown was never going to be the usc quarterback and if there's any beef that i have with clay helton is that he didn't recognize that earlier yeah. he didn't want to get he was being the you nice know, he guy. He didn't want to get Sam crushed in some of those early yeah. games. But Max Brown was a pencil neck, nothing. And, and he's going to be that for Pitt. And he just got the starting job. Yeah, he got the for starting Pitt. job. But, but, but you know what? It was the right call. And I'll t- for right. one reason and one reason only. It told everybody else on that team that had a job. Right. I'm just not going to throw you out because some better guy comes along. Right. He had to make Max the starter. It had to go right. through that gyration just because it was going to make the rest of the team sign on. Right. They were they were who they were because of that, right. and 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 I get that. But but from an out from the person who's looking at it as a fan, you I, it never felt comfortable with Brown ever. You know, and he certainly didn't endear himself after. He, you know, neither, neither did Juju Smith. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, it was great. I remember um, ESPN going to, it was a game, uh, I don't know if it was a USC game, um, but it was when Sarkeesian was still the coach um, before his little episode. But um, they said, oh, you know, they're talking about Max Brown taking over for Kessler and all this kind of stuff. And Sarkeesian says, don't don't take your eye off this kid that's on the scout team. And he's like, what are you talking about? He goes, Do you watch this kid, Sam. Darnold? So right then and there, they were talking about how impressive right. Sam was in the, as a scout right. uh, quarterback. And that, and, and they're kind of winking, you know, at him, you know, kind of saying, hey, look, this kid's the future, not, not this other kid that right. everybody's talking about. And the thing that made the decision easier for Clay Helton was – uh, those fall practices, Sam in spring and fall, right. he threw a lot of picks. Yeah. I, he threw yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. picks. And so it wasn't a clear cut decision. And at that point he just said, well, we're going to stick with Max. Well, if I can, if, if you got a story on this, yeah. but it was, yeah, go ahead. You know, I saw Darnold a senior year in high school and the Huntington beach game. I saw him make three touchdown throws that I went major college player mm-hmm. because it was not his first or second. It was his third option. And uh, I thought a high right, school kid. Yeah. So he red shirts, and I'm telling, I won't say who our mm-hmm. college football columnist is. He won't like me throwing his name around <laughs> on this because I, I ended up being right. And I'm telling him and Gary Klein for years, two years, this is the guy. This is the guy. And then he got the job, and each week that he, this columnist grudgingly. <laughs> so after the Rose Bowl game, I'm at a post-Rose Bowl party, and I'm there early because uh, I'm a bum. I no longer work. And um, – <laughs> He walks in and he looks at me and he drops his head and then he goes, you're right. He's the greatest thing that has ever walked the face of the earth. So, well, well then it couldn't else, have been, well, it couldn't have been Scott Wolf. Then. No, it was not. <laughs> so what you're just saying is, is that there was that rumbling about Sam grew and grew and grew. Right. And, but it took the Rose Bowl for, this is a oh. prominent guy yeah. to say this, you know, this is the real deal. Yeah. And that was so. a great thing for, for Sam and. To, to and, and USC actually to be known nationwide, right? Because you know we all get this SEC stuff and it's all pre- yeah. ESPN yeah. and all them are all pro SEC and you know the Pac-12s uh, when it's on half the you know more than half the country's asleep, right? So it was a great time for them to kind of see, you know, who USC and what Sam's all about, and that's why I think that you know the hype's gone absolutely. Oh yeah, well, yeah, well and SC's always in the talk. Right. SC has to – that's the difference between SC and UCLA. SC has to lose the national respect. Right. UCLA has to earn it. Right. And that's true. how it's yeah, kind yeah. of set. That's true. Yeah. So talking about uh, respect and leadership, the USC, uh, Clay Helton named his captains today, Sam Darnold. Okay. A captain, Chenna Nuosu, Nuosu is also Chris Hawkins and Cameron Smith. Uh, so very interesting that uh, there's three defensemen, mm. defenders on that captain's list. And uh, the, obviously, as good as Darnold is looking to be, Heisman favorite, preseason All-American, coming off of that great season, that defense is stellar. And that's yeah. where they're going to live and die. Because there are going to be those I games totally when agree. somebody dials up the right scheme against Darnold right. and or Stanford holds the ball a little longer or Wazoo starts, you know, Chucking. slinging it yeah, and yeah. Right. and throw 70 passes there's going to be those games and and they're they're going to need those guys who uh porter gustin is one of the guys that i think he mm-hmm. doesn't get a lot of credit but he is so fun to watch and he i think is going to be a standout 
uh, among a, a team, a defensive team that that already looks like it's got a lot of big names the, to to watch. Um, one of the other things is that um, there's a kid, a big kid, Kenny Bigelow, who's been injured for a long, long time. Um, hasn't seen much action, has missed whole seasons, and he was a little injured and dinged up this fall, but he might be back. And on that uh, that front line, uh, defensively, he is a big, ferocious is he, dude. Is he on the line or is he on the ends? Or is no, he... he's, he's a, a, a tackle. Like tackle, a, okay. Yeah. He's a, like a Nose defensive guard tackle. tackle. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And he's big. Well, if I had to look at the SC team right now, I will tell you what the key moment's going to be. It's going to be Matt Boymeister's appeal. The, the, the <laughs> kicking team, you're right. The yeah, special yeah, teams yeah, right now yeah. is not looking Look at their, right. you know, how, how many games did was it that it was decided yeah. on a kick? Yeah. yeah. You know, and if they get Boymeister, they got a guy that's proven, then that's good. If yeah. they don't. then Yeah, they don't. It's been uh, right. just coin toss UCLA too right they they their kicker he had a bad year last yeah year, yeah so, he but, did but the difference is Boymeister's good yeah, really yeah, good. yeah not yeah, that Molson yeah. isn't yeah. Molson has ability and everything but yeah. Boymeister's proven himself and All everything right. so that appeal is is very important to to SC yeah. and the other thing is that we we're I'm gonna we're kicking Sam around a lot yeah, here yeah. and everything USC fans have to be a little careful about start talking like that Saturday Night Live bit about Ditka, you know. <laughs> yeah. Say, say Sam Darnold's facing the whole Klingon <laughs> right. nation. You know, right. you right. got to be careful not to make him into this right. mythical right. character. Right. He's nor yeah. does he, he want that. Right. He, he he's clearly the face of right. it, and he's clearly got the hype. But uh, Ronald Jones is a right. is a great running back. He's yep. going to take a lot of heat off. They're still looking for the wide receivers. Obviously, yeah. Deontay Burnett was terrific, and, and that was his coming out party at the at the Rose Bowl. Uh, they've got some freshmen who look really, really there's good. Al- there's always loads of talent. Yeah, there's there. always loads of talent. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Amaterbebe yeah. at the tight end is a, is a real special right. talent, and his little brother is uh, off his redshirt year, and he could be uh, at the wide receiver. So Josh Amaterbebe. Tyler Petit's actually a pretty good backup uh, tight end for yeah. you, also. Yeah, well, he's got to catch the. Ball. And I, yeah, like I said, I, I, I worry about that SMSC fans just getting in that mode that unless Sam Darnold throws 12 touchdowns and defeats ISIS, then it's not a very good week. You gotta, you gotta. I'm perfect. Sam I'm, be perf- Sam. I'm perfectly fine with a, a 12 for 28 day out of Sam if he throws no interceptions and the defense has three a plus three takeaways because I think that's those are going to be they, some of the games win. that you need. It's, and and you that's know what? a win. Sam would yeah. be. I've known yeah. Sam as I know him. He would be just happy with that too is Pittman and Mitchell I mean how are they doing and are, are they the yeah you know the, the, kind of the, the help of Burnett yeah Mitchell there's a, the, the other kid is the retro freshman Tyler Vaughn right uh, again it's all about they some of these guys are just not a hundred percent healthy yeah. um, they got Jalen Green and then they got Pittman right, right, is yeah. the guy also Stephen Mitchell Deontay Burnett and then I don't See, know where they go. Where, that. That's where I've always seen that they've done very well in recruiting as running backs and wide receivers so um, I always yeah. remember oh, there's them some always having depth in that in that right. position. I remember, you know, even watching a little bit last year. I'm like, who the heck is that running back? And he's just yeah. hitting holes. So they always usually have two to three deep on on each on each uh, uh, in each position. Yeah, so. Look, the name one of the names that might come up is Vallis Jones, uh, speedster, lot of speed in running back or no wide, wide receiver, receiver. Wide slot receiver. type yeah. type guy. Okay. But he's got some speed as well. So. Um, that's the guy to look for as well, and then the Tyler Tyler Vaughns. But it's going to be Stephen Mitchell and Deontay Burnett, uh, and uh, I think Daniel Amaterbebe is going to be yeah. Darnold's one of his favorite targets. Mm-hmm. And Ronald Jones is, you know, this is his time to make some money. You know, that the, he's got to make his exert his authority and and run and and see if he can get uh, you know well he's the guy now he's yeah. the he's the, he's top, the guy you know, it was the role justin yeah. davis had a year ago yeah. going yeah. in yeah that he was good. right and and and, and well, by the way where did davis end up it's, a, it's with the rams yeah it? is he yeah. with the rams yeah oh, okay yeah so and then said where it, you know it will be jones backup and there's a lot of talent it's it, again they got to spread it out it can't all just fall on on Darnold, right? You know, yeah, and and people have to realize that, and people can buy their Darnold shirts and go to the games, but it's you know they're going to be cheering for Cameron Smith and mm-hmm. Nuoso and 
and Port well, Augusta. That's what it Those takes to run the show. Game. You got to have depth. So you know. let's let's quickly go through the schedule. Um, okay. Western Michigan, maybe last year might have been a yeah. game, but I'm going to give that a win. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you also got those. These first games are always interesting because you're talking about coordinators have had a month right. Right. to, right. to yeah. prep. So right, and the, and they'll but come yeah, out. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of those first games over the years where. You, they come out a little slow, but then the, right. the the depth and the talent just starts to come out in the second half, and you realize, oh boy, that was only you know fourteen seven at the half right. or something, and then they just blow them away and score forty nine. I'm gonna I'm gonna defer on the Stanford the the Stanford game because that's a, that's the game that I that I worry about a lot. Well, that's a huge moment for both programs right yeah, there for, for this sure. Season. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a def, it's a defining. And Stanford's coming out of Australia, so I'm guessing they're probably gonna have a so they play they play this in, week or, and then a week and, off and then they have yeah. a week yeah, off. Yeah, they've got a week off. Jet lagging. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Um, I don't think that Longhorns game is going to be as tough. I'm giving them a win there. I'm curious, to actually, to see how that new Houston coach, he's a Houston coach, right. right, got that job. And, you know, that Houston t- team usually put up a lot of points. So I'm curious to see how he's turning that program around, actually. Um, well, it's, it's, it takes time with, right, with true. where that program is. Yeah. But Texas is something is completely different than most programs. Right. It, it is the state of Texas. Right, yeah. And they've right. not been happy. Right, true. Not being the team in Texas. I mean, they've been going through coaches right. since, yeah. So we'll, we'll see, but I'm going to give that a, a win. Yeah, They're I, going to be at Cal, and again, I think that's a win. Wazoo, it's a speed bump. I still think it's a win. I, I, I think that USC's just got too much talent. If it doesn't rain, <laughs> let's hope it doesn't rain, and yeah. I'm going to give them a win there. Oregon State uh, at the Coliseum, that's a win. Uh, Utah coming in, not as strong. Uh, easier to play them at the Coliseum than on the road. I'm grateful for that. I'm going to give them a win. Anybody disagreeing? You just step no, I in. Mean, to no, be honest, I, I mean, I think the Wazoo games uh, are going to be difficult. Right. That's that. That's right into Mike Leach's wheelhouse playing a team like SC. So. And then at Notre Dame, boy, that how far they have fallen, right? I'm giving that a W for the Trojans. Yeah, I mean, it, to be honest with you, you look at the rest of the schedule, anything they can run. W at Arizona State, W at Arizona. At Colorado, Colorado seems... who's filling their oats, uh, I think they that last year was their chance. They no, had their, I don't their, know. They, I well, think, they lost I think, their quarterback, right? But, quarterback, but the Montez the backup, guys yeah. is, is about as good and probably throws – it does throw the ball better. Yeah. Yeah. I would I would worry about that yeah. one, too, especially since we, it's it's late in the year. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in November your, 11th. You're way up in the altitude. Yeah, I, I, and, I definitely worry about that, yeah. uh, November 11th. And then it's uh, UCLA uh, at the Coliseum. I'm going to give that a W since you did. You gave it an L for UCLA. CLA. So that now we're we're looking at a couple of games there, Colorado, Stanford. There might have been another game that other people maybe you say Wazoo. I'm a little worried about Colorado, um, but right there we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and right. two. And um, people got to be happy with that. Yeah, ten and two. I think you're happy with. Probably. I don't think you're going to be happy if you lose to Colorado or Wazoo. Uh, I think you're okay if you you know. If you lose to well, Stanford, I mean, but that's early. People are, are talking national titles. So they're not going to be happy with it. Right. But what I'm saying is that's a that's a that's a good. That's season. reasonable. And people have to I, USC fans will have to start remember what it was like three years ago. And yeah. And all I, that. Right. And I guess I guess the thing to worry about is let, let's just say they, they get into one of the um, the BCS games, right? Um, that they really haven't been playing tough teams going in, and then they could be getting an SEC team or some big big 10 team or something like that so or is it big 12 big big 10 big 10, big stuff, 10. Yeah. 12 so, teams in the big 10 yeah, yeah <laughs> right exactly so i'm just wondering about like you know how they will do in their bowl game do the fact that you know the pac-12 other than stanford well, you're, and, you're and leaving, not playing or and not you're playing le- washington you're leaving out out of that is going to be a pac-12 title game oh that's and right so, yeah so, that so could be washington, washington that's or right. stanford right. or oregon good point. So, you, know, yeah, you good got, point. I don't yeah. think yeah. oregon will be in it but i think washington and stanford now now Washington and Stanford are in the north. Are right. In that north yes, right. correct. Yeah. So um, as a hopeful, enthusiastic USC fan, <laughs> I'm looking at that and thinking week off and then the, the championship game, Pac-12 championship game. Good news for USC. Right. Get healthy before that uh, December 1st right. uh, championship game. That, that's always been uh, you know, kind of tough for them. Um, and that's I, in San Francisco, neutral, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Well, not if they play Stanford. Yeah, not, <laughs> yeah, right. Right. not if they play Stanford. And then there'll be or seven. Cal. There'll be seven more Stanford fans than SC fans <laughs> in that place. <laughs> so. 
So I, I think it's I think it's UW coming out of the North. What do you think? I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I think Washington's the team to beat up there. Yeah. And I really like that coach. And I know that he interviewed for the job at USC. Yeah, and, Peterson. And I just maybe he I guess Hayden didn't like his personality. He was a little bit too quiet. But I, I think well, that guy's a quality coach. Yeah, he he's not a big city guy. Either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Chris Dufresne right. was a Times sports columnist right. for years and everything. Remembered being up there to do a story on him in Boise. And it was him and three Boise writers. So it was four people. And Peterson came in and said, wow, quite a crowd today. It's <laughs> one more person than usual. <laughs> and so so that's why Washington was a good spot for him. Because right. it's a city, but it's a little... If, you, right. if you've been up there, right. you know yeah, it's a yeah, little it's small. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. a small town in a city. Right. So I mean, you know, God, UCLA had Peterson on speed dial for a decade. They really? wanted him, yeah. And that's exactly what I've heard now about this Oregon State baseball coach. Same thing. Like, he's been offered every big job in, in the right. United States. And he's like... I'm okay. I've got a I've got a special needs kid wow. here, and I really like the Oregon. Well, yeah, that's Oregon insane. State. But I'm, you know, you're, if you're living the life in Corvallis, I mean, what could the rest of the world offer you? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it's a, that's a good. Keep those question. cards and letters that's a coming good in. Good yeah. question to ponder. Tip your waiter. Tucson, Corvallis. I got two. <laughs> <laughs> Colfax. <laughs> If you want to go on SoCalSports.com, you can click on the little tab on the homepage that says be part of the show and you can tell Chris how you feel about his views on Tucson and Corvallis as well as Colfax, Pullman Colfax. and Colfax. I like Pullman. Colfax okay. worries me. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we're, we're probably running a little late, but I'd like to just talk about a couple of things. Um, the Chargers and, and uh, the Rams, Max Turk. PD yeah, yeah. Suspension. Out for the first four games, yeah. And, USC uh, it just gets it gets thicker and thicker there at uh, in in LA and uh, for the Chargers and you know who can't fill up. You lose up. Perryman. You know I don't know how many how many weeks is he out? Is that he's a out five? until October? October. Well, you know, yeah. You know, we talked about UCLA and the the key of the five guys up front. I mean, that's the Chargers. No, the no doubt thing. about it. And so now you've lost Lamp. Tariq Burrell. Yeah, you've lost Lamp, and now Turek's gone. I mean. None of those guys maybe are prominent, but you also have guys. Yeah, that's stability like, on your line. You need that depth, and we right. all yeah. saw what happened when they were playing some of those guys in the fourth quarter. But, you know, they got they met, didn't have Barksdale or Okung play the other night for minor injuries. And so, you, you know, this – this is a concern. This yeah. is where the Chargers are, are, are going to have to find some answers. And Russell right. Okung was a great get. That's a guy that can yeah. stabilize your mm -hmm. line. He's going to protect that blind side, but he's got to stay healthy. Yeah. And who knew Manti Teo was such a great player? He was just all well, over. I mean, he had I mean, like eight well, tackles. I mean, that's the whole and... thing. The Chargers can make you look like a pro bowler. Yeah, I, I mean? guess so. Because <laughs> Robertson was it looked like a pro bowler. Yeah, Robertson, who was who was who was the linebacker there for. Right. For, I mean, the, he looked made the, both of those guys look like they're pro bowlers. And I'm, you know, look at I, I like I like the new coach. I like that he's trying to give this firm discipline. We're going to run the ball first and throw the ball second. I'm like, well. With this line, you might be chucking it early, you yeah. know. And yeah. but again, I think I've talked to Chris about this. It's, I think we're going to score points. There's no doubt about it, right? But Maybe. can we? But can we keep the other team yeah. off the field no, because the secondary's thin as thin gets, right. right? You've just lost Perryman. I mean, your your well, linebacker linebackers court are even more thin. Is, than now it's more thin. Now. You your your defensive line is actually pretty good, right? It's mm -hmm. going to be able to, you know, that's going to be the key if he can disturb the quarterback and make him, you know, that quarterback run, you know, or throw quick, quick throws and loose balls and stuff like that. But again, what we've seen in the first two games is it's, it's Swiss cheese. It's just, you yeah, go right, right through them. Right. Well, well, and, 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 and you don't want to get too worked up about NFL preseason. Right. Cause they're, they're dialed down the schemes in this, but it's not so much what they're doing on the field, but what they have. And like you said, they're very thin. A linebacker yeah. may be their thinnest spot. Or what they don't have. It, well, it, you know, right. Mike Williams. Right, exactly. Who knows? When well, you know, so Mike your first Williams, two picks, got, Lance got, out and Williams is out, right? You know, they, they got receivers. They're, they're not going to have a Keenan Williams, Allen, if yeah. Keenan Allen can stay. Yeah, yeah all, all those guys, you know. Uh, you got two tight ends, well, well, two yeah. tight ends. So that's that's the, the, yeah, but then I guess the question is, is then why would you, why would you spend that pick, that high of a pick on a receiver? Because he is an exceptional kid. And so if he's healthy, yeah, that's just one more thing you have in the, in the arsenal yeah. there. But 
where they where they you know linebackers are concerned and I think safety is too. Yeah, yeah. They need some depth there. And stopping teams in preseason isn't as worrisome as what sort of guys they have on the field. And I there there are, there are holes in that Charger lineup. Mm-hmm. And it's yep. it should yep. concern. And, and what's very easy is these guys know it. Like these opponents and they're coming in going that kid's a rookie going right after him. Yeah. And they'll pick at you all day long. Right. It's just it's it's not rocket science. You know, it's analytics, you know, they know exactly what, right. you know, it's funny how I, I started saying the first Seattle, Seattle really never went down the field. They threw it be, on the other side of the linebacker in between the, right. with the safety, right? And it was all day long. They were able yeah. to do that. And a guy like Russell Wilson, he's going like this. And if he doesn't see it open, it's wide open for him to run for eight yards, 10 right. yards, whatever. Right. So, um, you know, so it's, it's. It's not looking good. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, and again, it, I, I totally agree with you, Chris. It's it's preseason. I, I'm really not going to say anything until we start to see the first couple of games. But that being said, what I've seen is there's no depth at all, and you're rolling the dice on staying 100 percent healthy with your starting squads. Right. And, and right. well, and then yeah, that, yeah. That, that is what they're faced with, yeah. and it's yeah. in the NFL that doesn't happen. True. So switching over to the the L.A. Rams, the thing that I have to say is that, you know, if you want to win the fight for L.A., you have got to sign Aaron Donald. There's just no question about it. That's you win the fight by signing Aaron Donald and you do it yesterday. I don't know why this is still, you know, give him one hundred twenty million. Do whatever you got to do. I I mean, we've got you was a Fletcher Fletcher Cox for the Mm -hmm. Eagles had one hundred and eight million dollar contract and. Dominic and Sue, you know, 118 million. That, that's the kind of money he's going to get. Let's not quibble about this. And right, he's a right? three-time Pro Bowler, right? In the last no, three he, years, he, right? They, they need to, to work out a deal for him. Now, I don't know what the agents are asking for or what, but yeah, they you can't have that guy not in camera. No. By the way, when you say fight for LA, you're talking about the fight for the number two NFL team. In that's LA, right. Because <laughs> the Raiders could come in here tomorrow <laughs> and sell out both the Carson right. Stadium and the Coliseum. They're going to be number one in Las Vegas Lakers and in LA. Right, right, yeah, 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 exactly. So, yeah. I mean, the, but we were, we were talking about about that earlier yeah. today the reason that is is because they won that's right so right. charges and rams who's going to get there first right and I, I i really think that if if and i know that you've said is golf the answer i know that you're you're not I'm sold worried. on I'm, I'm you're worried. worried about it yeah um but i'll tell you this much this cooper cuff kid is fun to watch oh, and, yeah. and I, I i'm starting to see a another wes welker edelman kind of guy i mean he has no problem going across the you middle you want to name another white receiver Steve Largent? Uh, no, I'm saying that <laughs> Slot goes across the middle, catches it, doesn't mind getting hit. It was Anquan, also white. And Quan Bolden. Okay. Right, okay, right. there you go. <laughs> we but, want to reference people that wore face masks in game. We're not going back that yeah. far. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Yeah. So, so I'm, just, I'm just saying that uh, he he's fun to watch, and, and I'll tell you right there, he's getting very comfortable throwing up. And he's the kind of kid you throw it anywhere, he'll catch it. He runs great routes. Yeah. He, does, he, he, he really runs does. great routes. Yeah. He's got good hands, yeah. and he's a gamer. But I, I love you, you need Sammy to get on board a little bit more here, and they need to start to get in in cahoots here. And he's still struggling a little bit to kind of figure that out. I know he's just he just got onto the team, mm-hmm. but I really believe that this defense can keep you in ball games. Now, oh, no question. Not offense, without Donald, right, they won't. Right, exactly. But I I still think that they can be competitive to the point where now can. Goff, go get them 14 to 21 points a game. That's that's well, the big question. Goff, to me, I'm, I saw him three years at Cal, and I was stunned that they gave Hate up him. all that to make it a trip. So, but you go, right. okay, right. we'll see. He is still in that category to me. He's either going to develop and become a quality in a quarterback, or he's going to be Jim Everett. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the Rams don't yeah. need Jim Everett again. Yeah. We, we lived through that once. Yeah. So what, what are they saying? Yeah, what are they saying about the, you know the, I've heard good things about the kid. Is the kid from Oregon State the backup quarterback? Man, yeah, he's a. I liked him I, at Oregon State. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mannion. Mannion. Yeah. Mannion. Yeah. I, I don't. I've seen him play. You know, a little bit, and I, I don't mind him. I, I mean, he could take that job. Uh, well, you don't want him to take that job if you've right. given up six. Right. You know, and draft right. picks to, to, and, to and get it off. Just, it's just like you, you got to make a decision. If it's not happening, you know, you might have to bring that kid but in. But it's going to take so long for them to, yeah. if that's the case. Right. Yeah. Because no, they no, did no. They give so a, much for it. Yeah, they're going to give them a lot yeah. of rope. But I like Mannion, too. But, no, it's it's golf's job from now yeah. and until whenever. And right. it would have to take absolute disaster right. for and, him to lose And the having job. Mannion there was the reason they were able to let Keenum, you know, right. go sign somewhere right. else. Right. Um, well, they're they're nurturing Goff, and and they know they have a good backup in Mannion. 
Gurley is the, another issue. Yeah. Well, they got to be able to run the ball. Right. Boy, three no point, doubt what about is it? 3.9, 3.7 right. yeah. yards per carry. That's, that's not going to get it done. Right. And it's not going to – and you're not going to be able to hit anybody. Tavon, Austin – you right. know, Woods, Watkins, you know. There's uh, another great route runner. Cooper Cup. Woods is a good route right. runner. I mean, there, there's been times where I saw where Woods is like, I'm open, I'm open, and mm-hmm. Goff's not no, seeing he's, him. No, he's got receivers and yeah. everything. But what you're talking about is true. If you're not really respecting the run, you're going to load up. You're going to be bringing stunts uh, towards mm-hmm. the quarterback. You're going to make him throw off the wrong foot. You're going to rush him. You know, he's still a young quarterback. And those receivers yeah. aren't going to – be able to help much if if there isn't balance to this, and yeah. you got to be balanced in the NFL. Right, absolutely. So we're going to wrap up the football. We're going to talk about the one th- the th- news item that came down while we were chatting at Starbucks and the trade of Kyrie Irving uh, to the Boston Celtics from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, Irving will go to the Celtics, and the Cavs will get Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, Ante Zizek, and the Nets tw- 2018 pick that uh, Boston holds the rights to. I don't know if it's protected or not. I don't remember. Um, in a big, big move. And we knew Irving was not happy, didn't want to be mm-hmm. there, wanted that to be his team, but they still got to keep LeBron happy. Does this make keep LeBron in Cleveland? Oh, I think it'll keep him in Cleveland, yeah. I, my, you know, I, I hear all the talk. I, I think LeBron retires in Cleveland. Yeah. Oh, you know, he, he, he won his title. He came back. Dang it, Chris. That's not what we wanted to hear. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sorry. Well, you know what? The Lakers have a bigger problem on their hand before we start talking about LeBron. I yeah. mean, the tampering issue. I mean, Magic Johnson went right out there and said, yeah, they could sign Teen Wolf. And I got to think there's copyright violations there on the Jimmy Kimmel show. I think Michael J. Fox has got to be a little nervous, yeah. you know, but no, but, but, you know, LeBron, I mean, he, he, he left. Cleveland once, and I've and I've grown a lot of respect for LeBron over the years mm-hmm. because when he did the little dog and pony show, and, and you know we all In know Miami. now that was yeah. ESPN's. Right, right, yeah. I thought, well, here's just another professional athlete is a jerk, but now he's a quality man. He came back to Cleveland for a reason. I don't see him leaving Cleveland. But he has a house in Bel Air, and I just can kind of. So he's got, yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think so, Laker so fans you know what? like you to come out here and you spend the summer at Bel Air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. it, you know, the, you can read all the subtext into it. You want Laker fans would love to have, you know, they got a lot of, of cap space or they will next year um, to entertain those dreams of, of getting LeBron James and Paul George. Um, but again, is it going to happen? Well, Jerry Buss is gone. That's all I'm going to say. Right. These, yeah, but I mean, it's it's still you. You bring those two guys in. I don't still think you have the team that can go to the finals. I just don't Let's, think there's another. We'll see. We'll yeah. see because it's this is it's a good young core. Yeah. It's just a matter whether they can step it up. Yeah. Step it up. Is it too building, young right yeah, now yeah. to be a, 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 an attractive option for a guy like a veteran like LeBron or a veteran mm-hmm. like Paul George who looks at it and says, what? yeah, they're young, but I think are George, they any good? I, I would guess George is coming. Yeah. He's really made no bones about the fact that he wants to play here. Yeah. But again, like I said, I just think LeBron's an Ohio guy. I think he, he mm-hmm. took a beating when he left yeah. Ohio before, and I, I, I got to think that had an effect. Otherwise, why are you coming sure. back? Sure, sure. So I, I would just, you know, and, and how old is he now? 30. Mid, no, early 30, 30s. 32. Early 30s, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, he's getting up there. And, and he's in that position where he looks at ownership and say, get me some guys. <laughs> he's 32. He's getting up there. No, well, well. No, I know it is. You know, that's, that's what it's, they're it's saying. Like it's like dog years. Yeah, the that's, NBA, that's right. You know? That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, he's getting up there. No, but it yeah. just. He know, is. Yeah, he's a veteran. He's, he's so, a veteran. But, I mean, he's, he's still so much the franchise that, yeah, they lose – I mean, but I, you, you got to think that he signed off on that. Why mm-hmm. would the ownership just do that without consulting him? Yeah. So, I mean, he can look around and say, bring me this guy. And maybe he thinks Thomas is a guy mm-hmm. he can play with. So, I mean, I, it, it just seems like too much of an Ohio guy for him to ever leave there. Sorry, Laker fans. Yeah. 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 We'll see. We'll see. So I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up with that. Okay. Any any final words? Anything you want? No, to... it's been a pleasure. I hope you come back. I hope you had a good time. I, I had a very good time. I, yeah. I got to say, I feel kind of like Alec Guinness in the Bridge on the River Kwai in here in the sweat box. But <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll live. Got <laughs> yeah. I, I hope it's I hope it's not too obvious. But uh, please join us yeah. in here. It is uh, you know like a sauna. Yeah. But uh, uh, the good news is I've lost three pounds tonight. So. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, For John Adams, Chris Foster, I'm Vince Morales. Uh, John Stellman will be back, and uh, 
SoCalSportsReport.com. Check it out. Thanks a lot. Good night. Peace.